Why, hello. This is still Kirk. This is still dumb test late. Um, but this episode is a bit different. Um, it's not one of those very special episodes or um, that from sitcoms in the 90s or when they tapple, tackle a, you know, difficult subject or like one of those apology YouTube videos YouTubers have to make. No. So instead of doing my occasional or usual, usual um, podcast up when I come up with an idea and I get AI to help this one, I'm going to do what I call an AI reality check in. So it's just a check in of my current mental state uh, as far as AI goes or how I feel about AI. Um, I think I did this sometime with the episode when I did um, full circle with AI. I did an episode about that. So this is kind of like that, but it's more of how I feel about AI because it's it's a new year. If you didn't realize or if you listen to some way time in the future, this is 2024. Today's the eighth. I did episode on the first, so it's not the first episode I'm doing of the year. Um, but like I'm saying, it's a reality check in or a heat check or whatever, or my mood as far as AI goes, because I mean, I'm the star of the show, <laughs> but it is a show that is like I'm, I've been calling it the idea podcast with AI or the uh, podcast about ideas with AI. I don't know. I still haven't nailed that down. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But AI is the tool I'm using um, to help with to punch up or, you know, uh, develop out these ideas I have for movies, TV shows, series, whatever. Um, the last one I did was about the, the what I call the 80, when it was multiple versions of Shakespeare. Um, but like this one is a step aside, I'll say, um, of how I feel about AI. So enough explanation. OK, so this this update about AI is kind of based around I was really um, deeply thinking about the book. One of my favorite books, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Um, it's one of those books that like I read a while ago um, and I'll read every now and then. Uh, now I listen to a, a audio version of it because I, can, I don't know where my physical copy is. I think I gave it away when I moved because it's just hard to move with books. Um but I'm listening to the an audio version of it. And it made me like think again about something like I had a thought again about it. And then I was like, I need to re in this case, re-listen to it to remind myself. But it's based around the opening of that book um, with Decker uh, talking to his wife. They're having a conversation about the thing in the future. Actually, I didn't realize I didn't remember this at the time that is set in 2021. It's just wild because we're past that. Um, I mean, of course, some things came true. It's always weird, like when you read, because this was written in the 60s um, by Philip K. Dick, or it came out in like 68 or 67, I, I guess, when I looked up the info about it. But it's always weird with like stories from the past, from what in my timeline, I would time or my life, I would consider the past way in the past. This is the 60s of when they envision the future. It's always, it's a certain thing that's futuristic. But it still has like old elements like they talk about vid phones, like when you call someone, everything's on video, but you still have to call an operator to get someone's number or to connect with someone like we have. We have, you know, FaceTime and Teams and all that stuff now, but you, you don't call an operator. You can just dial a person. So it's always like futuristic, but still kind of retro, which is another thing that made me think of if I'm thinking of the future from now, what? current thing would I be stuck like we have physical phones that can do anything you can order food from me you could talk to someone you could search up anything but like would that be would there be no more physical communication in the future but I'll be still stuck on like it'll be a branded like technology or no will not in the future will mesh um mesh all of our minds and we can contact each other all the time, but there'd still be a phone. Like I'd be stuck on that if I was thinking about the future from now, but that's kind of sidetracked. So in Androids, do Androids dream of electric street? It opens with Decker, who is a bounty hunter who hunts rogue androids. <clears throat> this is what Blade Runner is based on. Weirdly, I've never seen Blade Runner, but I've read the book, do Androids dream of electric street many times. Um, 
So Decker's a bounty hunter for rogue androids, and he's talking to his wife about, they're having a conversation about this thing that they have called the Penfield Mood Organ, where, I don't know, there's not really an interface talked about it, because they just said you can dial in a mood, so it automatically sets your mood for you. You could euphoric and happy, or you can depressed and argumentative and all this stuff. And he's kind of going back and forth with his wife because she constantly wants to dial in these moods of, you know, being depressed and being down and being, having an argument and being, you know, um, I can't think of any other sad words, but this like a down, a general down mood. And he keeps like, he actually physically dialed a good mood for her but then he leaves and goes to work as a bounty hunter and he talks to her and finds out she dialed something more depressing and more down and more kind of self-involved and self um identifying if i can say i can't think of the right word right now kids um but a down mood and he has another argument with her so they kind of go back and forth um about this and it, it makes me think like, say this is a real thing in the future. It's funny because it's said in 2021. Say in our future, this is a real thing where you can instantly dial in what mood you want. And also what mood you want for someone. Say you're in a relationship with someone. You can have the ability and openness to dial a mood for someone else. Um, it made me think and it made me think a lot about what you would do um, and how Decker's wife. I think her name is Irene, Irene or Irene or Iron. I can't. It's it's spelled I-R-A-N, but it's weird to say for me. She constantly she has the option to to constantly feel happy. It's literally it's I'm assuming it's a button or it's a dial or it's something. But whatever the interface is, you can at the flick of a switch feel happy all the time. If you had that power. She keeps dialing, depressing, um, self-loathing. That's what I was trying to think of, self-loathing moods. And it made me think on if this was real, if, we, if we're looking at this world that they're living in, in the future, does she know what sadness and happiness is? Or is her reality of moods in the moods of her partner, Decker, only based on this device. Because you can dial a mood of how you interact with, because I think he said he dialed a mood to have a pleasant wife or something like that. So it made me think of, first it made me think of, is she an android? Because does she not, is she not able to conceptualize moods in humans or how she should present herself as a human and she's torn on that. So the only way she can feel is to dial depressed and down moods. That's feeling for her. Cause she has the option to feed, to dial joyous moods, which she probably has done before, but she keeps constantly going back to feeling down. So maybe think of reality. How do we define our reality? And this goes back to another episode here about Samakura and simulation in the Matrix and creating a reality around you. So this device, as far as moods go and as far as interactions go, it creates a reality around here, around you. And her reality is constantly down because that's the way she can feel. Decker wants her to be more pleasant because he knows it's a flip of a switch and it will make his life a lot better because he's struggling being a bounty hunter hunting these new nexus six or nexus seven i can't remember um androids and he's struggling with his mental state and his happiness and his wants um but she just wants to feel because it doesn't really go into his feelings about it it's just he just like wants her to shut up kind of <laughs> it's written in the 60s um and she just she i guess and another thing that it could be that she's they're both human and this is the only way he can get a she can get a reaction from him is by dialing in these combative and aggressive and argumentative and depressed moods to have arguments with him because that's the only interaction she can get from him. If she def always def, um, dials happy and compliant wife mood, 
Maybe she doesn't feel anything from him because he gets exactly what he wants. Or maybe Decker is an android, which is, you know, a plot in the story with bounty hunters, if they're actually androids or not, um, if they have programmed memories. Because one of the tests that him as a bounty hunter does against um, or for a suspected android, the Voight Camp test tests empathy. So if you look at their interaction, he just wants her to dial in a happy mood so she can be quiet and be a happy wife. And that'd be happy, and that'd be easier for him to deal with. He doesn't see the reason she keeps going into this depressed mood to feel, which means he lacks empathy for her. So he might be the android lacking empathy and not seeing her real emotion pushing to these depressed moods on the mood organ to feel and to get responses from her husband or she might be an android and she doesn't she has these programmed memories that she realizes aren't real because that's the other thing about the androids they realize their memories aren't real so they're struggling with that acceptance and that reality and the only way she can have an actual feeling an actual response from her partner is by these depressed moods maybe they're both androids And this is the way they interact with each other. Him being cold to her because he doesn't have empathy. Her not having empathy from him uh, for him either. And just trying to be in this down depressed mode, this hurt mode to feel something because she's supposed to as a uh, Android human. She's supposed to show emotion. The only way she can is this depressed emotion. It just and. This is like the base art of this a dog. That's a dog from the earlier stories, the grim stories, if you can hear it. Sorry for that. Um, but yeah, this was my kind of like down the rabbit hole of AI and mental states, because this will probably happen in the future. Something there's going to be a chip in our head that can change our chemical balance at the flick of a switch at a dial and we could just automatically change our mood i mean there's medication now if you're struggling with depression and anxiety you can take medication for it um it's only time that there's going to be some there's a chip in our head there's something we plug into there's a there's goggles we put on our head that automatically change our mood and our reality around us and how we interact with people The thing I fell down the rabbit hole on is with AI being able to do that and us being say this happens in our lifetime. We are humans. We know we have a sense of what our reality is. We know what's around us and we have natural feelings. If a future where we can change that at the flick of a switch, what will we choose our reality to be? Will we constantly just dial in happy moods, happy moods, happy moods, happy moods? Would that be our reality that we choose for ourselves? Saying that we do have choice. Does AI take away our choice or do we still have choice? But will we be like Decker's wife and know that the flick of the switch, we have happiness. But the only thing we can really feel is depression because we're choosing to dial to that to have an actual feeling. Does happiness lose its Um, feeling on us or it's a grab of us if it's easily attainable. Is like a saying that people say when they succeed, it's if it's easy, it's not worth doing. Um, What rat race will be trapped in in the future? That's my, that was my uh, rabbit hole. Um, Yeah. I think that's all the notes I wrote about it. I need to watch Blade Runner one day. I mean, I love the book so much. Do do androids dream of electric sheep? Um, I'm worried that Blade Runner isn't going to be as good as that or won't have that same feeling for me. So I don't want to ruin the story because I love the story itself. And I love all the themes it brings up with androids being self-aware and the person hunting them. If they're actually human, what are their Are they just programmed to hunt rogue androids to keep this, you know, corporate, um, this corporate secret getting out of rogue androids because a corporation obviously makes them, they make a lot of money on them. So maybe they programmed an Android to hunt down rogue androids. And it's, it's all this stuff about reality and 
what you see around you. So yeah, that's kind of my off episode or my aside episode, my heat check, my AI reality check-in. Um, the only other AI reality check-in thing is I won't be using chatbot GPT um, for the foreseeable future because somebody who has a prominent role there feels the need to post on social media about how good it is to commit genocide, um, which is not great. And I do not support that uh, now or ever. Um, So until they let fire him, I've signed a petition about it. If you can find the info, I don't want to glorify anybody's name or anything about that. Uh, I signed a petition saying fire this person. But until that happens, I will be looking for another um, chat bot or AI prompt program to use. I'll check out Google's. I heard Google's is pretty good chat. When when people say when they bring up um, AI, they always chat bot GPT is the one that gets referenced. But like I said, I won't be using them for the foreseeable future um, until they make changes. So for the next episode, if I use AI as my as a tool for the, ne- the next idea I have, whatever path I go down, it will be with another program. Um, that's my other AI reality check in that. Sometimes there are horrible things going on in the world and you can stand on one side or the other. And I will not stand on the side that cheers on genocide and the killing of innocent people. So let me get off my soapbox um, and say, I'm still Kirk, I'll end it there. And this is still dumb test late. This is a different kind of episode. I hope you liked it. Um, I'll do these from time to time when different things come up with AI. AI is still progressing. Um, It hasn't taken over yet. It hasn't taken over yet. Um, We're now all stuck in the belly of the beast. But uh, thanks for listening. Hope to do another one pretty soon. Hope another idea pops up. If not, uh, it'll be part of the Shakespeare um, thing I'm going to do with the 80, which I referenced in the last episode. But we shall see which inspiration pops into my head first. It takes me down the next rabbit hole. But um, again, thanks for listening. Bye bye.